What is going on, everybody? We are back. Liam P. Virtual Variety Broadcast. It is episode 13. I have missed you. I'm ready to get it going. I'm excited. Tonight, we're going to do some cool stuff. Man, are you watching this? He's doing the cell phone intro again. It's not any better. What do you mean? Did the comeback and it's just it's the same old stuff, man. Oh yeah. Yeah, I guess there were like some guests that canceled and then got a new job and things just kinda got busy and I don't know, excuses. Yeah, I don't get it. What even happened? Yeah, it's gonna be weird. Um but yeah, anyway, I gotta go get ready up doing comedy. You're going to do comedy without an audience. No audience. Probably going to be a disaster. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Yo. <laughs> what is hey, up, man? man? Hey. hey, thank you for doing this. Yes, it feels so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, as you know, it's been a busy time lately, so it's been cool to just make some music and make yes. some videos and, and have a good time, so I appreciate the opportunity for sure. I want to talk to you about uh, your songs. Start with Somewhere Fixing Things uh, as your first performance tonight. Uh, tell me about the song. Where did this song come from? What's it all about? Yes, some more fixing things. Okay, so this song was from my first EP. And it came from a relationship-esque situation. A romantic situation, I guess. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, just me kind of getting over some some stuff with with that and feeling better about my situation uh that was really the first time I had really ever been through anything like that so this song was just a reflection of me feeling better about something that I didn't think that I was ever going to feel better about um and yeah it's well no it's not necessarily literal just like all of my songs there's parts and pieces of the song that are right with the song and then there's parts and pieces that are kind of you know the art part the the story part i don't know um, um so it's not exactly literal but yeah well kind of going along uh if there was a lyric that you could change in this song would you is there is there a certain lyric that you would like to redo maybe something that you're not feeling oh uh if i could change a lyric would I a could lyric um gosh that's rough I hadn't even thought about it um yeah um I don't know some of the lyrics are just kind of with this song I feel like a lot of it was it's it's good but it's you know, it's harsher than I feel about things now. Like, I'm not this, like, ha-ha, look at me, I'm doing great, sucks to be you type person. I don't know that that's what this song is, but the lyrics kind of give that vibe sometimes. So I would maybe do some readjusting, but I can't think of any specific lines that I'm like, oh, that's that, that's not it. I get that. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. That's, that's a cool question. Um. I guess the last question is, is this song relevant for you? Oh, uh, is it relevant? I, I think this song, even though I wrote it about a kind of a moment in time, it's always going to hold some relevance because there's always stuff that would go through where you have to prove to yourself that you're better than than the heartbreak or better than whatever challenge it may be uh yeah 
It's relevant uh, lately for me. It's been really relevant, and uh, it's cool to be playing it again and and to revisit it for this episode. I did everything. It's kind of like a jam and did it all. um, You can see in the video that it's all just one take on every instrument, so not all this editing and, and retaking of stuff, just all the mistakes and everything are in there, but it felt really good to live in the song for a little bit because it it, it is relevant um so yeah yeah Thank you. 
you. Yeah. My name is Liam Pendergrass. Uh, I am fully aware that I look like I teach creative writing seminars in the woods. <laughs> I look like the secret love child of Shaggy and Daphne. Like, Zoinks, what are we gonna tell Fred? <laughs> I'll just, uh, just, just put Thomas' classes on him. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Joke in itself. So I want to talk about this song, Significant and Small. Yes. Uh, is this a recent song? Uh, yeah. So Significant and Small is brand new. I wrote it and did it for this episode. Uh, yeah. And I was just flowing on this idea. Um, I've been doing some reading that day. And it just it was a natural song came out really easy and uh, yeah it's a recent song very fresh very new okay there's a lyric picking up a signal that everyone interprets their way what is that yes. all about so that line is kind of significant to the whole song i guess uh picking up a signal that everyone interprets their way picking up a signal is you know, I mean, you don't want to give away the facade of your of your songs, but uh, that's basically just my way of saying life, living life. So picking up a signal that everyone interprets their way, it's like we all live life and we all have to deal with that same thing, that life, consciousness, existence, whatever it is. Um, but we all interpret it our own way and we have our own version of it. And that's why the world is so crazy is everyone's trying to understand each other when there's 8 billion or however many different versions of reality just living in people's heads. So we're all doing the same thing, but it all feels very different to all of us, and that's not often easy to remember. So is that is what's the main message of this song? What's the overall message that you're trying to get across, if, if there is one? Yeah, that's that's kind of with it. Uh, the main message, the main message of the song is really just to kind of focus on your own peace, but at the same time be open to learning and adjusting that idea of peace and, and learning new things, because you know, w it for us to just live for ourselves and to look after ourselves is great. But if you don't learn about other people and if you don't connect with other people and other ideas you could very well be part of a problem and not even realize it or understand it. So yes, protect your peace, but do so by learning and growing and understanding and becoming a better human being, I guess. Don't let a late start slow you down. You build your clock and tell your time. But by your clarity of mind Microscopic victories of interstellar scale Will help you if you let them have their place You were on a journey through space Significant and small all the same your present be your past you need to let the moments flow each day is greater than your land if you allow your mind to grow microscopic victories of interstellar scale will help you if you let 
shorter stool anyway um, yeah so I, I really came here today to make a case for cargo pants yeah yeah um, I live with my mother and uh, she, she's not a fan of the, the cargo shorts I'm a big fan of the cargo shorts and uh, pretty much all the women in my life have never been a fan of cargo shorts and Listen, you know, I, I'm on your side, to be honest, I'm with you. Uh, I would be pretty bitter about cargo shorts if I had lived a life deprived of pockets. I know it's not fair. Like, I know you guys don't have pockets. I've heard the tales, and cargo pants have all the pockets. They have all the pockets. I'm never going to stop wearing cargo pants and cargo shorts. Cargo shorts are amazing. I could fit two paperback novels in my pants. I could carry two paperback novels with my hands tied behind my back, thanks to cargo shorts. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's not, we're not going to stop wearing them. Men are just not going to, we're not going to stop wearing everybody. I mean, luckily we live in a town now where it's like everybody's wearing whatever they want. And so hopefully cargo shorts and cargo pants are just going to make the full on comeback. Cause they're not, they're not going away for this guy. They're pretty important to me. They're pretty important to me. Uh, but yeah, I get it. It's not a fashion injustice. It's more of a uh, an injustice and sexism in the clothing industry. Okay, so last but presumably not least, uh, we got the song "Same Name." So tell me about this song. Uh, is it a personal song? Uh, yeah. So same name. This is 
brand new. I finished this earlier today. I'm not even trying to front. A lot of time when I do these shows, I'm finishing songs the day of. You know that. Um, but yeah, this is a personal song. It's very... Uh, basically, uh, you know, I'm a very reflective person. I'm always looking at myself. And, and you know, with combined with a low self-esteem, it's kind of like, you know, you always feel like you're doing the wrong thing. So this song is sort of a reminder to me that even though I always feel like I'm doing the wrong thing, or maybe I feel like I've messed up in the past and, and you know, I can't let go of certain stuff like that. Uh, we all have done that, you know. It's it's sort of that idea of, you know, he who is without sin. Uh, it's, it, it's just, you know, reassuring that yourself that, you make mistakes since so that's what this song is is for me it's it's me being in this place of self-reflection and me talking about that but also at the end of the day saying you know that we all have this stuff going on and really we all should be reflecting on it and um yeah so that's where this is from and i guess i've been feeling that lately because that's it came out that way um there's uh, yeah, I I definitely get that. I hope you get bored of me. You can leave the party and I'll stay back to clean up the mess I made. I have a weird attitude, a second tier ambition, and it matters to me to take the time to learn without a thing in return. But I know I take it slow and show up late.
Sorry, excuse me. So, uh, why is it that only jerks have flags? I'm not talking about flags. Uh, 2020, 2021. Just flags. We got your Make America Great flags. Um, too many Confederate flags in this area. You just, they just, you see them. It's like seeing a creature in the woods. They're just, it's just a stain on the landscape. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, and then you have your guys that are like, have the flag of the out of state football team. And like, you'll just random, you'll be in North Carolina and see a Baltimore Ravens flag. And you're like, that guy. I don't know, get a flag. Baltimore, they have, Maryland is all about their flag. They're just, they've got it on like socks and t-shirts and people, Maryland flag tattoos. And they're like, yes, we crabs and stuff. And um, in, in the other parts of the world, places, they don't just hang up their flag. They're not like, hey, dude, here's, I'm gonna put this flag on my house. It's just kind of a weird thing that we do here. Um, America is like the Maryland of the world when it comes to flags. Dude. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, dude. Um, oh, it's working. Uh, so, uh, your name is <laughs> Dean. Why is my name Dean? Dean, <laughs> did you do that? No. Why are you Dean? I don't know. Hold on a second. I don't know how you. I mean, it doesn't matter. You could be Dean tonight, <laughs> dude. I'm Dean, bro. That's like <laughs> you know how every time you go to uh, Taco Bell, you say Lee instead of Liam. Yes. I'm gonna be Dean instead of Dalton. You should. You should. My Google name is Dean. That's good. that's odd. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. If I fix it here, does it fix it on Zoom? I don't know. It, it, it doesn't matter. I'm still it's, Dean, bro. It's it's fine. It's good. It's good content. Is it? Right. Hey. So uh, I appreciate you doing this, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate um, you having me. Yeah. Uh, so I sent you the questions. Yep. Um, questionnaire, actually. Qu questionnaire, <laughs> yes. Basically, you are going to be me. Okay. And I'm going to be me. All right. But as if I were, you know, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so you're going to be, but you're going to be you. But I'm going to be me. And then I'm going to be you yes and then i'm gonna be me being you yes so ultimately you are you you were always you and, and that's who you are man i'm like bright red i got this, you are i got this cool shirt and i can't really show it to you because i'm bright red that's okay um all right dean whoa dude are you ready for some questions liam Dude, this is crazy. I feel like I'm a, okay, first of all, I want to say this is real. This is not just for the, the video. Uh, I, number one, <laughs> number one, did not read these questions before I sent them to you. Okay. So it's been like a, a month since um, I had Ace on the show. Right. It's, been, it's been a month since I've, I've looked at these. Second uh, truth is that I uh, I don't know what these questions are. Okay. That's kind of the same as the first truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah I, I remember at least three of them for sure. Okay. Um, Where are you ready? I'm I'm ready, man. If you want All right. to bit them at me. Uh number one. Dude. Sorry about that. No, that's number okay. one. Uh what is your favorite beverage? Ooh, my favorite beverage. My favorite beverage is a matcha latte. A matcha latte. With almond milk. And now, uh, explain to the folks at home what a matcha latte is. So, it's matcha green tea, 
which all is right. tea from Japan. I don't know why I'm doing this. First of all, you can't even see what my hands are doing. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's tea. This means tea. Okay, international <laughs> symbol for tea. <laughs> for tea. Uh, so it's matcha green tea with unsweetened almond milk. That's how, how, <laughs> how Papa likes That's it. not... <laughs> This is a, this is an unsweet dollar milk. Okay. With unsweet dollar milk. And, and then there's uh stevia. Stevia. Vanilla stevia. Because you okay. squ- you squirt it out of the, okay. the, the squirter. Mm-hmm. And uh da 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 the honey. Honey. A wild Ooh. wildflower honey. We talked about wildflower honey the other day. Yeah. Putting honey in hot drinks is underrated. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good it's a good combination. Yeah, dude, it's it's good stuff. So that's my favorite beverage. Um, it's kind of bougie. All right, uh, let's just keep it rolling here. Uh, car or SUV? Oh, SUV. Okay, so I, I um I have to be a, a jerk and side sideball my own question here. Are you? I know what you're gonna say. What am I gonna say? You're gonna say crossover. Oh no, no, I'm not gonna say that. Oh, okay. Those are cool. Okay, in a perfect world, yes, I would <laughs> I would drive a crossover, uh, mm-hmm. but in a world where I can only afford one vehicle, and even then I'm doing good, uh, minivan, mm. minivan. So of course, so yeah, it's not an SUV, more just like a UV, a UV, a DUV, a dad a, utility vehicle, dad utility vehicle. Yeah, the new Honda DUV, Honda DUV. For deans everywhere. Deans everywhere. DUVs for for deans all across. Look up, d- America. <laughs> maybe maybe I got a dean sponsorship, and this is their way of letting me know. That'd be cool. You finally got that dean sponsorship. Uh, I guess I got a freaking Liam Pendergrass sponsorship. Okay, so when I first distributed my music on the internet, mm-hmm. I put Liam Pendergrass as my record label. Mm-hmm. So now when you go to Google and search me it like looks really official and nice but then it says record label liam pendergrass <laughs> and i feel that like that just looks really doofy i need to get another artist to also say that their label is liam pendergrass then okay it'll be legit and then it's legit once you have two people yeah two two two's a crowd they always say two and one of them is also the person <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah all right, uh, question number three here, Liam. What is the best decade for music? Oh, oh shit! See, the problem about all of these is that I had to censor that. Uh, no, it's okay. This is not a family show. Uh, <laughs> it it is, but uh, parental guidance. Uh, you you know what I mean? Yeah. Pretend it's the eighties. Uh, yeah. I- anyway, um, da 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 da. da. Best take of music. Yes, the problem with this question is that I've answered it like almost every time I've asked it Mm -hmm. to all the other guests, uh, and I think I'm pretty much always different on my (laughs) answer. So I don't think anybody's checking. Like I don't think I have any like diehard fans that are like, but you said in In episode four (laughs) you said the '60s, but then literally one week later in episode five you said the '70s. Oh gosh, yeah. All right, the best decade for music is the seventies, and only because you that's you had funk music. If it yeah, was cite your sources, what are some examples of the seventies being the best de- decade? The, the reason that the seventies is the best is because the nineties would be the best. The nineties has great rock, it has great pop, it has great R and B. But the thing that it's missing, the 70s has all three of those, man. The 70s has all three of those. But the thing that the 70s has that 90s doesn't is a banging funk scene. And also disco. I like, oh, I like disco. I had to make the... the yeah, uh, you got to get the other one up there. Yeah, I like disco. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that is that is why the 70s is like the best decade for music. Did the 70s have Creed and the Swing Revival? Uh, you don't have to answer that question. Number four, cats or dogs? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gosh. Um, the Creed is a good argument. Cats, 100%. Cats do not bark. 
That is the whole argument right there. They don't. That's all you. That's all you need to know. I mean, dogs are great, but but they bark. But they bark, dude. And barking is not my favorite. (laughs) Barking's rough. It's not. Oh, rough. Um, if we had any other pet that just went around the house screaming all day, we wouldn't tolerate it. But it's dogs. And they're cute and they love you. That sucks, man. My, it's my... hard to talk about dogs because if you say something wrong, you'll just do a giant heel turn on the internet. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. This is. I always tell everybody that these are the questions that are going to make everybody hate you. Mm-hmm. And like, it, on surface level, it doesn't seem like that, but. In reality, someone's out there like, man, this dude freaking likes minivans and cats. <laughs> like, I don't said the seventies last week. You said the forties. I don't want to listen to this guy anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Making everybody subtly lose fans. Is that's the master plan right there? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is I. The, I facade as facade is a verb now. I facade <laughs> as helping regional musicians but in reality i'm just tearing us all down the liam pendergrass virtual derailment hour yeah. <laughs> tearing us down with the truth all right anyway all right uh dinner or breakfast all right i'm gonna say i'm gonna say breakfast and here's the issue i pretty much eat breakfast food every day okay so i don't know yeah, 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 breakfast, breakfast. I eat breakfast food all the time. If I need, like, a good pick-me-up, I eat eggs and, like, some some breakfast meat and maybe some spinach, like Popeye. Uh-huh. Do you squeeze the can and it just shoots off into the air back down in your mouth? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It does crazy. That takes a lot of dexterity. Yeah, yeah, dude. And I do it, and I've got this hand cooking the eggs mm-hmm. and then i've got his hands popping spinach right and i've got a corded dial phone yeah <laughs> right, right here yeah in, in my in my neck and i'm just making i'm just booking shows and yeah ma- and, and making eggs with this hand mm-hmm. uh, cats rubbing against my my robed and slippers. Dude, I've seen leg. all this happen. It's very yeah. impressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's I crazy. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. You, you know the truth. <laughs> I'm just verifying for the folks at home. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. What is your favorite sport? Dramatic spit take. Um. <laughs> uh, my favorite sport is golf, man. I, I want to pretend that it's anything other than that because mm-hmm. uh, I know how that answer feels <laughs> going into people's ears. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I golf is my favorite sport, and I do not watch golf anymore. Nor do I really play it very much anymore. But still, your favorite. Still, I if I could play golf every day of my life. Mm-hmm. I would do it for sure. I just surprised can't. you went with golf because you were going through a pretty heavy uh, shuffleboard phase there for a while. Yeah, yeah, man. I remember you had like all kind of like shuffleboard jerseys. Well, you know, um, you know, with COVID and everything, mm-hmm. I was planning on. Okay, so I was planning on leaving my terrible band, leaving the Nerdy Blues, mm-hmm. behind, mm-hmm. and friends and family um you know relationships all of that yeah you pets go, yeah yeah pets out you gone. know what i mean immediately gone. first uh, one's out uh, yeah yeah so i was going to hit the cruise circuit right and i was going to play mm-hmm. play music on cruise ships mm-hmm. and also you know really play some shut like cause you really just of, you think about cruise ships man it's an international crowd and right. If you, if you really want to hone your shuffleboard skills, mm-hmm. you're not. You're not. First of all, you got the old people, so you're hitting the the wisdom. Right. Then, then you've got, you know, different flavors of the, right of the shuffleboard cuisine from all. If you want to be world. a true champion, you have to defend around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cruise, but you know, with COVID and everything, and cruise ships, you know, 
just kind of shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really, I don't know if I want to, uh, I don't think I would ever go on a cruise, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a worse idea, actually. No, man, I hate people. If it was like the size of the Titanic, mm-hmm. I would do it. But it's like, The only thing worse than a cruise ship is a, like a Zeppelin. Because a Zeppelin is just a cruise ship in the air. Ooh. So then you have like also the falling out of the sky to deal with. Do they still do that? I don't think so. No. I think once we invented airplanes, we were like, this whole Zeppelin thing <laughs> seems like a bad idea in retrospect. That idea dropped like a lead Zeppelin. There it is. You said Zeppelin like four times. Ooh, okay. I shouldn't say this, uh, but I'm gonna. I was Cut this it. Up. I was no, I'm not going to. Uh, I was <laughs> in a Zoom call uh, for work today. You also had that band uh, Airborne that was just like, the, oh, this is just ACDC, but it's called Airborne. Man, it's crazy. And people will, uh, I've never heard of that band. The really? Only, the only Airborne I know of is you remember the the little tablets that you would put in water and it would fizz up. Like mm-hmm. Al- Alka Seltzer. So you wouldn't get sick on an airplane. Yeah. Uh, that's good. You know, I've never been on a commercial flight, but I have had airborne. Can you explain that to me? No, I I, I don't think you can. Sometimes <laughs> I get nervous on airplanes. Ooh. Okay. What question are we on? <laughs> Uh, number seven. All right. Seven seven up, bro. Seven up. If you had to move to another country, where? Oh, uh, this is easy. Uh, New Zealand? Mm-hmm. You got a song about it. I have a song. Yeah. Dated. Uh, <laughs> but uh, New Zealand is a good place. They have really nice politics. Now I feel like I'm just singing the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, they've got really good stuff going on. The um, prime minister, is that what you call her? Yeah. Yeah, she's great. She's good. She's super cool. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, I've been thinking about it. Uh, I know <laughs> Australia is super racist. And so I have this huge fear that I'm going to do it, spend all this time and effort to, to move to New Zealand. And then I'm mm-hmm. going to get there and they're going to be racist. And I'm going to be not happy i don't think that's the case i'm pretty sure when you cross that little bit of ocean between australia and new zealand all the racism kind of washes out Uh aha cool maybe that's instead of everybody going to like myrtle beach all the rednecks should just vacation at that little strip of water there and get swim in the ocean and wash out their racism just let it all drain out into the chesapeake bay Yes, exactly. New Zealand, dude. Um, yeah, I'm a socialist, I guess. All right. So I guess this ties into your next question. Warm weather or cold weather? See, this one's hard. And New Zealand, I'm, I'm admitting that I'm sacrificing to not have my ideal climate. Yeah. I it's actually, kind of a trade-off for it being a positive in literally every other category. Exactly. I'm not a huge fan of insanely hot weather. Same. Yeah. Now, I'm cold-natured. You've you've seen it. Like, you've seen me walk outside on, like, an 80-degree night and start and shivering. And just, like, shivering, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm, like, sweating. Yeah. Yeah, so you see that. But, yeah, ultimately, uh, I would rather pile on the clothes 
than not be able to get any more naked than I am. And also, I don't have a nice body, and <laughs> so I don't like to wear shorts. I don't, yeah. I don't like to wear shorts. I don't present myself well in shorts. I feel like I I walk like a donkey mm -hmm. if my knees aren't covered. Mm -hmm. Um. See, I have really good calves, so I can just pull off some shorts. Yeah, you do. You, yeah, you look great. You look like a, a temple when you wear shorts. And a I, temple? I look weird. I, it's like no, but see, I agree with you on cold weather because I, uh, based solely on the fact that cold weather clothing fits on my body better. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I just yeah. have to go with cold weather. Also. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um. I like baggy clothes too, and I feel like if you wear baggy clothes when it's hot, oh, it's look, miserable. Yeah, and you look like 2003. <laughs> you just like look like that. Like the big shirts with like Tweety Bird wearing a fedora with like a Tommy gun. Yeah, you just look like that. Like you could be wearing a normal, like super cool t shirt of like the, the hottest brand or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's like a size too big and you have cargo shorts on, it's 2003 automatic it automatically turns into Tweety Bird and like a swag flat bill hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how it works. Dude, the universe is crazy with the way physics works sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. And it's <laughs> I mean, you know, we got that down to a science. You see it literally every day, but we can't yeah. we can't time travel or 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 but go to be no honest. by all means nasa keep trying to fly a helicopter on mars yeah that's important dude <laughs> what is it on it's like third flight now yeah i saw that it it went up again that's crazy and we can make oxygen what are we oh, yeah. even, what are we even that one's about? even crazier and i feel like nobody's talking about that nobody's part nobody's talking about that part and i i was telling my dad if they could do that does this mean that they can start trying to do that on the moon as well it's a good question because I didn't know we were doing that kind of stuff. And it seems like we would have tried it on the moon first, right? Yeah. So why aren't there just people like walking around out there? I bet there are. That's the conspiracy. This will come up later in the questionnaire. So you can just keep going. Okay. <laughs> There's space, space series. Space, space series. Space series. Space series. Space series. Space Space. My favorite kind of dinosaur is the space series. Question num number nine. Number nine. Mini golf or bowling? Oh, now uh, you wrote mini golf. I think we all know what's called putt putt. Okay, yeah. See, I you know the thing about it is, is that you know I have large ambitions for myself. Okay, and, and I was really hoping to maybe get some you know guests from other places in the mm -hmm. in, in the the world. Or, you know, just guests in general for this damn show. <laughs> so, so, so originally I wrote the question it, so I wouldn't be like, putt putt. And they'd be like, oh, oh what's, a what's putt putt? putt? <laughs> oi, oi, mate, what's putt putt? <laughs> exactly. Okay, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, putt putt for sure. Uh, I uh, Bowling? Mm hmm. Bowling's going to be hard for me to do after COVID, man. It's it's rough. Everyone's like, "Yeah, man, let's go. We're gonna go bowling again. We're bowling right now. Let's fucking we're gonna bowl." I'm like, sweaty, like not even an inch wide hole that you yeah. just share with other people. Yeah, your little sweaty, little grubby fingers that someone just stuck up their ass, and now you got a little <laughs> fan to blow all your little stinky hand germs all yeah, over everything. Literally, just 
feces resting on that hand. It's just like when you like put a balloon over a fan and it just hovers there. Yeah. There's just feces hovering <laughs> there when you when you put your hand over it. If a bowling alley goes long enough without cleaning, eventually whole turds just form in that it's, little. Yeah, 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 yeah dude. It's crazy. It's, Never seen anything like again. Physics, uh, crazy. Physics, dude. This is this has become a whole science lesson. This episode here. All right, this next question I foresee giving you at least an hour worth of content. Uh, what is your favorite cartoon character? Oh, no. Yeah. Man, I've, I've literally asked this question like four times now, and I haven't even thought about my own answer. Mm-hmm. Oh, It's God. a tough one. I don't even know what I would answer if I were in your seat. You're gonna have to when we when you do your episode. I'm gonna interview you again, and we're gonna have to. Oh, All right. oh, good, good, gracious, alive. Um, oh, it's a tough one. I know there are a lot of pivotal cartoon characters in your life. Yeah, there are a lot of them, and and re- recently I've been doing the anime thing, and I'm really into that. So now I'm like. Does that does that fit in? There's a whole new lane to consider. It's a whole new, a whole new world. I knew that was coming. Oh, uh, uh, I'm now I'm literally looking around the room. Like, is there anything I can find that will give me the answer to this question? Um, butters. Butters. I can see that's a good answer. Yeah. Just knowing you personally, uh, butters is a strong answer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I almost didn't get it too. I almost didn't even consider, and 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 I'm kind of ashamed of myself because I'm such a wholesome fellow in in my own view, mm-hmm. and so not at all in anybody else's. Uh, but to to choose an adult cartoon when I love so many family friendly animated series. <laughs> Yeah, but see, Butters is the wholesome on that show. It is exactly that's exactly why I went for it. Butters is the wholesome release of a uh, wholesome relief of South Park. Wholesome release. <laughs> wholesome. Cut that out. All right. That's our new band name. Wholesome release. We are wholesome release. Black Hole 34. D. D. Row. Dalton. Yeah. Dalton Row Dog and, and the wholesome release. Dalton Row Dog and the wholesome release. Featuring. Uh, featuring Lee P. Snacks. Ooh, I like that. Is that are we? And Josh, Josh Destruction. I'm keeping Lee P. Snacks for when I when I start my rap. When career. you start your uh, battle rapping. My SoundCloud, yes, exclusively. You're gonna I'm be not, on Smack URL. Like. I'm not rapping unless someone's going down in the process. Ooh. Put it up. Put it Ooh. up right here. Wh- whatever this means, do that. Okay. Right. <laughs> Last question. Really? And yeah, I think this one is very important. So, um, uh, musician, I have a really cool band with my two best friends, and we do cool things. I mean, we uh, so once we did a show at, at an art gallery with the band, and we were supposed to be playing music outside, but on the way, the weather got kind of weird, and they were like, "We're gonna move you inside." So we're this loud three-piece band who we went from playing outside to playing in this art gallery. <laughs> and they had like an opener with like an acoustic guitar and everybody loved it. It was great. But we were hanging out waiting. For some reason, it was like really behind too. Like we waited a while before we decided, okay, we're going to play inside. So um, also, can somebody give me like a shorter stool? I just, I'm not as small person I don't understand um, but anyway uh, we were waiting to play and we waited for a while and then we you know you're gonna have to play inside so we played inside um, but before we played this man approached us and he was like hey I have like a little quick act that I do that I just want to do to get the people riled up I don't remember exactly who he was or what he did, but he was involved somehow in the thing. And uh, he was like, hey, we, uh, I got this thing. Can, can I do it? It's only going to be a couple of minutes. And we're like, yeah, sure. So 
we're all hanging out outside, and our gear's already set up. We're just gonna walk up there after he gets done doing his thing, and we're gonna play. And uh, yes, it's uh, a lot of bits switching. Uh, the stool, but uh, anyway. So yeah, we uh, <laughs> we're just hanging out outside, and all of a sudden we hear. You know the song, We Built This City on Rock and Roll? We built this city. So there's like a loose, obviously really loose, uh, free karaoke version of that going on over this speaker system or whatever. I think someone had like a, one of those Bluetooth karaoke things that uh, they were pumping a phone through or something. And, and it was that song. And <laughs> we see this man, He's, he comes into this space, not a big space, okay, so like a high school classroom size art area. And uh, he comes into this space, and there's quite a bit of people, there's probably like 40, I don't know, there's somewhere between 25 and 40 people hanging out in there in this dark, tiny room. So it feels full, it's an intimate performance. <laughs> And this man comes out just enthusiastic. He's, he's, he's stabbing with his shoulders a lot. He's got the shoulder stab energy. So he's coming out. He's pointing. He's got the big smile. Can't even, can't even do it. Um, he, he's just stabbing and, and pointing. He's got a big smile. And I can't even do it because I'm not that happy of a person. But he comes out. And he's really big and happy. And he's singing the, the name of the town. We're just going to call it Franklin City. Uh, so he comes out, we built Franklin City on rock and roll, and it's just that over and over again, and he's got like a like lingo to go with the town, and he works with the town, and he loves the town, and so he's got, and it, it's amazing, he has the most amazing confidence, and he comes, and he actually comes outside to the people that are hanging out on the sidewalk that were avoiding this kind of um, connection with it all, he comes outside to us, and he's like dancing and, and interacting with us and everybody inside is like looking out the window like, yeah, and like everybody's loving it. And it's so great. It's so obscure. It's so effective. And he's doing it. And then we had to follow that. We, uh, <laughs> the three of us gentlemen had to, this loud band in this tiny little room had to walk in and do it and just play. And it was crazy. And you get in these situations where you you just don't know. You have no idea if they're, if people are into it or if you're like about to blow it. Because the thing that came right before you is so different. It's kind of like it's kind of like when you date somebody and like if I were to date somebody and to find out that their last boyfriend was like a quarterback or something, it's just like oh. Why are you, are you going to enjoy this, like, blues and soul music I'm about to play? You're like, I don't get it. So we go into this room, and oddly enough, it was fun. He, he, he really set the mood for us. He was one of the best openers. So we're going to find that guy and hire him. And every time we play, he's just going to go around with us and change his song. That same song, never a different song, but... He's just going to sing that same song for us and hype up the crowd and, and kill it. I'm going to adjust my shirt. It's so important. Dude, if, I... you were, if you were asked tomorrow by the president to J travel into J space. Wait, wait, wait. Is it Joe Biden? Yeah, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, okay. To travel into space to meet aliens. Would you do it? I think about this every day of my life. <laughs> yes. Yes, I would do it, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing is, is that if you have received that offer, you know at that moment in your life that the entire realm of existence is about to change. Yep. It's not a question of like, I don't want to go. 
I'm scared. Um, yeah, heavy as the head, dude. Yeah, it's about to get crazy. So I'm like, yes, I want to go. I want to go first. Like mm-hmm. I want to I know. I don't want anybody else's opinions messing with my opinions. I don't want anybody else to, to you know, I want to do it. And yes, mm-hmm. and if they were like, hey, stay here and hang out and, and, and do Liam stuff. Like, we've been watching your show. We, 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 we actually know. get your show out here in Zeta Reticuli. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we have a small local coffee shop brewery music scene here. You just host the open mics. Yeah, dude. I would, I would do it. I'll do it for sure. And I get the whole, like, the argument so far has been, like, you don't know who you're going with. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that freaks me out. Because it's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I wouldn't want to go up there with, like, Matt Gates. Yeah. (laughs) But but Joe Biden asked me. So it's probably going to be, like, a bunch of really cool black people. What if it was Steve Carell in his Space Force character? Yeah. Yeah, I would go. It, and if, especially if John Malkovich was awesome. <laughs> yeah. You're going to meet aliens with Steve Carell and John Malkovich. I would, yeah. Yeah. I would, even I, as a last life experience, I think I would volunteer <laughs> for that. If that yeah. were my, if they were like, you're going to be a red shirt on this mission, I would be like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay man, I'll, I'll take it. Take one. That phaser's me. too useless. Can Jeff Goldblum also attend? Why Jeff Goldblum he... be like, meet the aliens and be like, uh, 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 uh. dude, 10 out of 10, Jeff Thanks. Goldblum. Someone Thanks. called Seth Myers' uh, but uh, uh, oh gosh. What's the Wedding Crashers guy? Oh, uh, the other guy in Wedding Crashers? Vince Vaughn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, someone called out Vince or Seth Myers is. There's a lot of names in this sentence. <laughs> someone called out Seth Myers' impression of Vince Vaughn as sounding like Jeff Goldblum. Mm-hmm. So he corrected them by doing an impression of Vince Vaughn talking to Jeff Goldblum. And that is the kind of level of entertainer I'm trying to be. Dude, he's great. (laughs) So talented. Yeah, yeah. That's just, even just, even if it's bad, Mm -hmm. the fact that you go for that is great. Mm -hmm. It's like a band covering Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, yeah. It's never going to make sense. But when it happens, it's great. Yes, I would go to space, dude. Yes, I would meet the aliens. I would not even need all of that if they were just like, hey, some some people from another planet are going to knock on your door tomorrow. Uh, we'll give you 10 bucks if you don't shit your pants. <laughs> I would... <laughs> I, I would do it for free. <laughs> and, and, you know... Pants situation unrelated to the price situation. Mm-hmm. In turn, and, and, you know, we don't even have to talk about if I were to fill my pants or not. Because I, yeah. be, I would be doing it. Anyway. Out of the goodness of my heart. Out of the kindness of your soul. Yeah, dude. I would meet, I would meet so many aliens so hard. All right. Here's a question for you, though. What if the aliens do offer you that job at the coffee shop that you were talking about? But all they, the way their music works, all instruments are tuned to 432 hertz. Oh, that just means it would sound better. Do you think? Oh, so you're in that camp? Either that or I would go insane because everything Mm -hmm. would sound slightly out of tune. That's what I'm thinking. You would go eventually insane because it would be so different. Probably like I would never hear an E major seven chord ever again. And I would just. Dude, I think we just wrote. A new episode of Twilight Zone. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah, Jordan yeah. Peele on the phone now. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't know, man. I Yeah. And, you know, they could, like, have a thing where every music, every music that I play. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, all of the music all you play. The, all, every, every. Every music, single one of those music. Every single one of those music that I play. Uh. Could just sound bad because they have like alien ears. Alien ears. Listen with your alien ears. I don't want to discriminate, but I don't. I mean, 
I don't want to assume, but I also don't want to not assume. I get you. Not assume. Someone's going to cut that clip out of context. <laughs> Man, <laughs> if anybody's cutting anything out of my videos, it's probably going to help me out. <laughs> <laughs> Even if, it, even if it's bad, it's more exposure that I'm getting right now. There's no such thing as bad press. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that was the last question, Liam. Um, okay. Uh, I guess what what do now is um, I'd say thank you, Dalton, for the awesome interview. What was that? It's a. Uh, it's a device. Yeah, it's a device. Cool, uh, but yeah, I say thank you. I could, sorry, I say <laughs> thank you, Mister Dalton Dean Roland. That's my new name. <laughs> I'd like to officially announce, uh, in my small co-hosting segment of this part of the show, that I <laughs> uh, officially am now Dean. Dalton Dean Roland. Oh gosh, Dean. Man. I don't know. Should I be worried that that for some reason my Google name was just Dean? So some guys just using your Google account. Some guy just commandeered my Google account. He's literally listening to this interview right now. <laughs> They're on to me. <laughs> And Dean's really like a 63 year old woman from uh, Pasadena. She smokes uh, She smokes a pack of Cheyennes a day. Yes. Ooh. So I just want to say thank you for checking this out. Uh, big thanks to Dalton for the interview. Thanks for supporting the show and thanks for being patient. And um, I'm glad to be back and do it again. And I'll see you in two weeks with my friend Akise J. She's going to come back for her second episode of the show. And I'm pumped. I'm ready. We're going to do some cool stuff. It's going to be fun. So until next time, much love.